Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my experience regarding about this contact frame specialized for the uh, 12th gen and 13th gen Intel processor. Now, some of you might have witnessed from other reviewers stating that it can bring down the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius or even more. Based on the fact those reviewers are overseas and of a colder country. Now, how will this fare in tropical area like what I'm at? which is room temperature, 30 degrees Celsius. So let's begin with the unboxing, then followed by uh, guiding you on how to mount this uh, contact frame on the motherboard itself. But before I begin, I'd like to thank Nap Cooling to have provided this two unit for me to share with you guys. Let's begin. Before I show you the content, what's inside this box, something which I really appreciate the packaging itself. As all the content on the packaging, it tells you how this contact frame is being done like it's been diamond cut there are some precaution on the uh, anodizing of the frame itself and the easiness of installation and such and what is it designed for and at the back it tells you all the description and the measurements of the uh, frame itself okay when i unbox this this is actually sponge You'll be given an instruction manual telling you on how to mount the uh, contact frame proper wrap and this is how it looks like very sleek and besides this there is a talk allen key for you to fasten the frame on the motherboard itself and additional four screws. Now, I'm going to show you how to mount this frame on with the processor on a motherboard itself. Before showing you how I apply the uh, contact frame with the processor on the motherboard itself, something to take note when you are applying the uh, screws to hold the uh, processor in place, right? Make sure you do it evenly as in like even pressure down. Don't put like one side screw too tight then leaving this up so if you will do it that way right the contact frame will be like irregular it's not flat this will cause bad thermal results so take note on this now to do the contact frame first thing you need to do is to remove the latch over here which is the 1700 bracket then with your processor place it to the location Then once it's in place, right? Sorry, once it's in place, right? Remove this bracket, or should I say this cover? All you need to do is just press this, and you just snap out of it. Then do not have to latch it. What you need to do is to take out the original seventeen hundred frame. So right now I'm just taking out. Take your time. Do not rush as you wouldn't want to damage the uh, motherboard surrounding like the you know VRM areas, the caps and such so take your time to remove so this is easily done then remove these screws over here you will be needing them back okay or you can make use of the screws that is provided with the NAD cooling contact frame which is this that I'm not going to use, I'm going to use the original. So once you have done with one side, do the other side, leaving the processor. The reason to have this processor on, right, so that when you are unscrewing the uh, bracket itself, right, you will not accidentally, okay, as you can see, right, all these pins inside, if you you know, do not have this covered, right? You might accidentally just screw it and slip your, I mean, the torque screw or the top Allen key onto these pins. So this is something which you wouldn't want to happen. So make sure this is intact. Then, as I mentioned, take your time. Probably I should zoom in. Okay, take your time to remove.
So this is done. So next thing you need to do is to apply the uh, contact frame. So with this orientation, right, since the motherboard is you know facing this way, place the contact frame. Once you have done, place back the screws. Put it down gently. Now to fast fasten this frame itself, right? Do not just go clockwise. Go anti-clockwise till you hear a click because that will sit the screws in the correct position to the hole. See, you hear a click. So once you hear the click, when you tighten it, right? Don't tighten it all the way. I would say about 30 degree. See, my Allen key is facing this way. I'll just make it straight. That's it. Then followed by the next one which is diagonal to where you have started here the click oh. see you hear the click so from this angle again just slightly 30 degree same goes to this okay I know that this is, will be straight then same goes to this you hear a click I turn in. So do this gradually. Now you can start to screw. As you can see, this is straight. So I go about a quarter turn. Same apply to here. See? A quarter turn. A quarter turn. And a quarter turn. So repeat this step as in like a quarter, a quarter, a quarter at each end here i mean diagonally do it diagonally until where you face that there is some tension do not force anymore just leave it as it is if you do this correctly take a look at the uh, angle of this top screw so i would just do it this way see to every side see you always stand on the same and you can feel this see it's always facing this way then push it down straight and push it so right now just to secure the four sides and it's done and you will have to feel as in like the tension of what you're mounting right is equal as you can see my system is up and running on my left I deliberately place the uh, temperature over here Though it's actually night time right now, it's still 30 degrees Celsius in my room and it's not air conditioner. And just to show you, see I'm waving, so this is live. And as for the configuration on the UEFI itself, this is how it looks like. Now I'll be using a i7-13700K with a 32 gig kit. Then what I've done with the OC Twinkle, first thing I've done, the DRAM switches. I mean the DDR5 RAMs, which is to enable the XMP profile. Next, I've done a limitation on the CPU power drawn. I know this 13700K is en enabled to draw a max power, I mean max uh, wattage of 253, but I wouldn't want to run, run it consistent at 253. Reason being, right, the room temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, and if I were to let it run at auto or to configure at 253, right, I don't want my processor to run that hot, which is above 98 or 100 degrees Celsius. So I have limited it to 215, as you can see over here, be the power limit one and power limit two. Reason for this, right, I want it to run between the uh, temperature of 80 to 90 degrees Celsius and not 90 to 100. And also I've done a offset on the B core so with this offset right it will draw whatever is needed off from the 215 board which i have set now let me just take you to windows and to explain further how i do the test or how i conduct the test okay windows is loaded up application that i'll be using there are two applications or should i say three first of all i have the uh, hardware info which is needed to pull the stats. Right, let me just leave this one side. 
I'll be using R23, or sorry, should I say Cinebench R23? Let me just widen this a bit. And next will be from Unigine, known as Belly Benchmark. Now I'm not going to test the GPU. In fact, why I run this is just to show you the stats. See, you can see over here, the stats are over here. And all the stats, right, is being put from Hardware Info. I will not let the uh, background run to confuse you. So what I will do, uh, I will fix at one point. So all you need to know is all the stats over here. The top section is telling you the uh, CPU temperature, the uh, usage as in like how much percent is being loaded. So most of the time when I run R23, right, you'll be 100 and you'll fluctuate as it cycles. Then the core frequency itself, right, in fact, is the uh, speed of the CPU itself. So as mentioned to you, I power limit this to 215. So it will not go above 5.5 gigahertz and so it will just hover around 4.9 to 5 gigahertz. And right now, my new is actually at idle. So how I do the con how I conduct the test, as mentioned to you, there will be two tests. One, which is without the contact frame with the original 1700 bracket. Next will be the contact frame. And on each of this, right, what I'll be doing is I'll run Cinebench for 10 minutes to let, to let everything sit properly. Then I'll let it idle where you can see the graph over here, right? And idle, right, it'll be a straight line for five minutes. Then once that's done, right, I will conduct the uh, 10 minutes run again. And all you need to do is just to observe the temperature. So the main point uh, to observe this chart over here. And right at the bottom over here, right, it does tell you about the motherboard temperature, the uh, M.2 SSD temperature, the D DDR5 RAMs. And over here, only radiator, radiator fans, reason being, right, I'm using an open bench um, test. So this is needed. And I've set the RPM to a fixed 2000 RPM max. All right, without further ado, let me just show you the first test, which is the uh, non-contact frame, then followed by the contact frame. And right after that, I'll tell you the results. The results are out. What you see over here is actually at idle. Do remember I run 10 minutes beforehand and I've let it idle for five minutes before I conduct the test again. So at idle, right, for the five minutes itself, take a look at the idle temperature. Without the contact frame, it's at 45 degrees Celsius. And with the contact frame, it drops to two degrees, which is very good. And besides this, right, with this contact frame mounted on the processor itself, it does impact the rest of the temperature like the motherboard, the M.2 and the DDR5. I mean the RAMs. Take a look, compare at idle. Without the frame is at 35 on motherboard and with the frame is 33. Same goes to the rest, it will just drop. And if I were to pull this Okay, look at the timing itself. If I were to pull this all the way to the last probably four minutes or so, and I'll let it run. See, the temperature. Without the frame is 88, with the frame is 84. And the rest is consistent, temperature drop. And something which surprised me is that Without the contact frame, right, the power package is drawing much more as compared to the one with. So most of the time, right, in fact, it's pulling a lot as compared to this. 
in order to sustain the clock frequency, as I mentioned, it hovers around 4.9 to 5 gigahertz. But most of the time, right, with the contact frame, right, it's actually hitting 5 gigahertz most of the time. And the RPM, as I mentioned to you, on the radiator is consistent, 2000 RPM. Now, reason for the drop of all this, right, I'll explain to you right now. You have seen that I've applied the uh, contact frame on the motherboard itself to hold the processor and if you do it correctly as in like having the flatness not irregular, you have full contact and that will absorb more heat to the uh, core plate of your AIO. And why is it so that your motherboard temperature, your RAM temperature, your M.2 temperature and even your VRMs, I should have shown you the temperature on the VRMs too, they will drop. Why is this so? Now looking at the original bracket itself, you see that there are two contact points over here. So assuming that you have the processor, this is not a processor, it's just an illustration. So if you were to place it this right, there are lots of tension pushing the uh, IHS of the processor itself, causing the two points right to pin down the uh, processor. And as you know, when metal uh, being pinned down right, especially thin metal, it will just slightly bend. So assuming that with this two point applying pressure, yeah, you will not be drastically bent, but there will still be a bending. So this will cause us, now this is the AIO core plate. This will cause us the core plate not to sit flat. Okay. And as you know, when metal expand right when it's hot so assuming that this is the processor right when you expand right with the pressure of this two point you will go even further and with this going further right you won't have good contact between your core plate and to your processor so this will cause heat not to be absorbed from your AIO that means to say dissipating more heat off and to absorb on your AIO itself. So end up the heat will land back to your motherboard, which causes the thermal temperature to increase on your M.2, your RAMs, or even your VRMs. The question right now, is it worth getting this contact frame? My recommendation, definitely a yes. Reason being, it not only bring down the temperature of your CPU, but the rest of your components, like the M.2, your RAMs, or even the VRMs. And this thing doesn't cost a lot. In fact, you can purchase this at Amazon, which is less than $10. I'll leave the link at my description so you can just click and purchase it. Now, there's one thing though, you will need to mount this correctly as in like, make it as flat as possible when you are cramping the uh, processor. Assuming this is a processor, make sure that you cramp nicely. And for those of you who are not Having steady hands, right, I wouldn't advise you to get this because you might even do worse. So there you have it. Hope you guys have actually enjoyed what I've shared with you. And with this say, I'd like to thank Nap Cooling to have provided these two units, which I've tested both. They yield the same result. And for those of you who are actually new to my channel, welcome to my channel. And if you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.